Schwab Asset Management is proud to support the Inside ETFs podcast. In today's complex world, Schwab Asset Management provides a simple, straightforward approach to investing. As one of the largest and most experienced asset managers, they offer low-cost core ETFs for building the foundation of a diversified portfolio. Their focused lineup, which includes market cap index and strategic beta ETFs, is a reflection of a commitment to deliver exceptional experiences to investors and the financial professionals who serve them. Learn more at schwabassetmanagement.com forward slash ETFs. Hello and welcome to Inside ETFs, the podcast where we bring the latest and greatest ETF industry perspectives directly to you through in-depth conversations with key thought leaders from across the ETF ecosystem. I'm your host, Douglas Jonas, the head of exchange-traded products at the New York Stock Exchange, the home of ETFs. Now, today I'm joined by Dave Mazza. Dave is the head of products at Direction. He leads the research and development of new products and the ongoing product management and strategy for the firm. He publishes investment commentary and blogs, so I recommend you follow him on all the major publications, LinkedIn and otherwise, uh, to provide actionable ideas for investors and traders. In addition, his team is responsible for managing relationships with the firm's strategic partners. Dave, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. So, Dave, let's start at the beginning. You know, you and I have known each other a long time. How did you get into the ETF business? You know, and, and as you look back a bit on your career, is there some thing, event, what, you know, what was most pivotal point that sort of led you to where you are today? Yeah, so it's interesting. So in this day and age, a lot of folks, uh, and I'm sure you get the same emails, uh, they want to get into ETFs. Uh, they're familiar with it. Uh, even when I uh, started my career, ETFs were still a relatively smaller part of the asset management industry. And I actually fell into ETFs by accident. Uh, I was working uh, on a portfolio management team at State Street Global Advisors. Uh, and at the time, there was a lot of questions of the impact passive and particularly ETFs were having on the ability for particularly quantitative portfolio managers to outperform. And so I actually wrote a research paper um, that was published uh, in a journal uh, simply called Do ETFs Increase Correlations? Uh, and the spider ETF business at State Street at the time um, sort of uh, called up and said, why is this analyst, who is he and why is he writing um, research about ETFs uh, and had a dialogue. And from there, I joined, I actually joined the spider ETF business uh, in, in, in a research function there. So um, not maybe a traditional way of, of entering the ETF space, uh, but, but I really never looked back since. Um, and, and particularly the developments that have occurred since that time have been pretty remarkable. I love the story because, you know, uh, and you and I both do this. We mentor a lot of young people come out of college. They'll ask these questions or, hey, did, did you know, I, you know, what are you going to do in college when you went to college? And look, a lot of these jobs, particularly ours and our careers, they didn't even exist when we were in college. And so uh, the idea that just open up and level the platform, don't worry about those things, just worry about learning, really educating, and and the career will, will kind of find you if you're if you're having fun and you're learning every day, and you're, and you're engaged in a fun part of finance like we are, uh, it, it comes to you. So what is it that, that brought you over to Direction? You know, what is it you and your teams focus on every day? Well, Direction is, uh, is uh, really a unicorn in the ETF space, because primarily uh, the focus was, uh, historically was creating tools for tactical traders, and those really manifest as daily leverage and inverse products. So products that allow uh, folks to turn on a dime, to express opinions in a precise way, um, but what's interesting and one of the reasons why I, I was interested in joining Direction was really the focus on, like every ETF, democratizing access, um, but really for, for retail, uh, retail traders to be able to uh, express opinions in ways that historically only institutional investors could. Um, so institutional investors need something called an ISDA to, to trade derivatives and things of that nature. But for someone who has the ability to monitor their portfolio on a daily basis, um, the leverage and inverse products uh, that Direction offers um, can be very powerful for them. But at the same time, you know, we have a series of more traditional ETFs, but particularly thematic ones um, that allow uh, folks to express opinions over, over longer time periods as um, trends in remote work or moonshot technologies and disruptive industries um, begin to, to, uh, to play a greater role in our society. Yeah, I think you know you, you're spot on, right? A lot of retail very active and engaged in the market. I, a lot of everyone very active and engaged in the market all through COVID. It's you know seemingly all through now this volatility. Uh, what what I tend to find, especially when I talk about direction, 
is you'll have investors or advisors know about a couple of your products. Oh, it seems like everyone knows at least one direction lineup. But if we look broader than that, and for advisors that listen to this podcast and they're saying, hey, I know a couple of things, but but tell me more because you 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 sort of got into it. It's you, you know, you're not a one trick pony. You, you've got a lot of different investment vehicles available. Could you share a bit more when you kind of look at the broad landscape as to what it is that directions bringing to the ETF market? Yeah, no, I think that's um, that's a great point. Is that I, with with many um, uh, kind of leading ETF firms, there's there's true, kind of what I call hero tickers, right? And so those are those are where uh, the the ticker sort of uh, it maybe it's even more well known than um, uh, than the firm itself. And so for us, you know, uh, our heritage was in creating leverage and inverse products, and we and we continue to to believe in that space, and and it's one that we've grown over the years. Um, so folks probably know our, our bull semiconductor fund, SOXL, or our bull um, S&P 500 fund, SPXL, what have you, um, or our, tech, our, our bull tech fund, TechL. Uh, but but to, your, to your question, um, we, we have those products that are available for folks who want to express those tactical opinions. And again, really, they're, they're intended for trading. So if someone does not have the ability to monitor their portfolio on a daily basis to make that buy, sell, or hold decision... You know, we really we, we really advocate uh, educating yourselves on the ability to do that or avoiding them uh, if they're not for you. Uh, but we also believe that there's, you know, opportunities uh, for, for longer term disruption that are playing out, which is why we've complemented um, our lineup with uh, with with thematic ETFs. And, and they are um, a few well-known tickers are our moon, uh, which is our which is our 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 disruptive technology fund really focused on small and micro cap companies. Um, that many folks maybe have not heard of, um, but that's for good reason, because involved in, in uh, industries or areas that are very bleeding edge, uh, that also, you know, we have a commodities product, uh, the ticker is uh, COM, which is a really interesting fund because it takes long positions or flat positions in commodities. So t- uh, obviously commodities are in the news now because of inflation, but they can be difficult to own over the long term because um, the behavior of, of gold is very different than oil or from wheat. Um, so this fund actually uh, has, has has tools and methods to uh, to identify which ones might be more in favor versus others. Yeah, and Dave brings up a lot of really interesting points around how you educate your you know yourself about leveraged inverse. Uh, more traditional ETFs. If you haven't gone to Direction.com, great website. Dave and his team produce a lot of educational materials about how to dissect some of that, how to research, how these funds work, how to use use them best in a portfolio. So again, Direction.com. Dave, you guys focus a lot on product development. Could you talk about, especially in this sort of historic volatile market, market hasn't necessarily been performing well. Uh, of course, some of your ETFs have performed exceptionally well because they're inverse the broad market. Uh, what, what do you look at now when you start to think about product development and, and trends? Well, I think that, that's one of the most exciting areas of my job personally, but also I think the ETF industry where it's at the, we talk about product development, of course, I'm the head of product direction, but uh, to your point about the jobs that didn't exist uh, when we were in college, it's that the idea that ETFs could do more than just uh, covering equities or equity sectors or, was unfathomable to most uh, before fixed income ETFs came to bear or or commodity ETFs, and, and now we're even entering into into newer spaces potentially. So, um, I, I what we're kind of thinking about is really two areas. Is one is are is there regime change that's happening? Meaning that are we are we going to find ourselves in a higher inflationary environment? Um, what's happening with interest rates, what's happening with the dollar, and, and thinking about what products that may make sense um, for that environment as well, uh, but also continuing to look for new opportunities um, on, on the trading side. So for example, we uh, last, uh, last year we launched a fund called OOTO, uh, or a play on Out of the Office, which is a, a bull fund for travel and vacation stocks that's, that's picked up uh, as traders, have, have, traders have, have gravitated toward that space. So we really want to have options, both uh, both for trading tools, to your point, on the bull and the bear side, um, but also um, always thinking ahead and saying, well, what does the next year or three years begin to look like, as opposed to kind of just looking at flows or something which may just mo- have more of a rear view mirror perspective. And by the way, if you, if you haven't already picked up on it, Dave and his team are seemingly incredible at picking some of the most fantastic ticker symbols. Uh, if you want to be jealous of something. You could be jealous of that right there. 
Dave, talk a bit more about this market. I mean, clearly it has been a pretty big challenge. 2022 has not necessarily gone the way I think a lot of people thought it might. How should investors, advisors, how should they be thinking about managing their risk right now? Yeah, so what's difficult in this environment, certainly we've had, we've had sell-offs and, and pullbacks over the last, uh, last few years, or really even since the global financial crisis. This one feels a bit different, and I think it's more challenging, uh, particularly for advisors or, or retail investors who, who may be do-it-yourselfers, because seven straight weeks of declines in the S&P 500, eight straight weeks, uh, eight, eight consecutive declines in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which hasn't happened in decades. And, and it gets people concerned because you know, all of that's known. We've taken back a lot of the gains that we we made uh, in in the in the sort of worst of the COVID period from from March 2020 into 2021, and now now we have interest rate interest rates hikes coming, potential slowdown in the economy, geopolitical concerns that we haven't dealt with in, in some time. With that being said, I, you know I do think uh, when we hear calls that the 60/40 is is going away or dead, you know we've heard that before. I think. There's still an opportunity for, for that to be a core part of portfolios, but uh, uh, investors may want to look at, at other tools to, to, to diversify. So whether that's alternatives like commodities uh, or other solutions in that space that may create a better balance and not be totally reliant on what the what cycles that we've been in um, over the past decade. And, and this is not uh, predicting that, that the world is going to completely change going forward, but you know, looking at all the options that are available to folks, uh, and then you, you now can have more pers- per, per, prescriptive outcomes in portfolios than you could ever have historically. So for advisors out there with th- that are thinking about the tactical part of their portfolio, for investors who are they themselves a little bit more tactical in nature, are there best practices that your team shares when it comes to, to think about, you know, utilizing your ETFs? Yeah, no, that's a great point. So if someone is uh, is tactical in nature and ha- again has that ability to monitor portfolios on a frequent a frequent daily basis, you can look in this environment toward uh, toward inverse funds, for example, um, which which have not uh, which have not been been in favor for many years because we've been in a bull market and it's been difficult even to find many down days in a row. Uh, and that's of course that's changed. So you know, a fund that's really picked up interest is is our fund SPDN. Um, this is an inverse one X fund. So oftentimes when people think about leverage, it's two times or three times. This is just simply the on a daily basis, the inverse of the S&P 500. So if uh, the S&P was down 2%, this fund will be up 2%, for example, on a daily basis. So we're seeing folks use that as a tactical hedge, particularly in, in, in these uh uh, in these more volatile periods, so that's one of the reasons we've seen some pretty pretty sizable inflows in, in, in uh, particularly uh, in the last couple of weeks um, to, to to serve as that that hedge. If people want to make more kind of outright views of the markets, that's when you'd use a negative two or negative three x fund. Um, but there, uh, you know, the behavior is going to be a bit different than just kind of that inverse, that direct inverse one x fund that I noted. So staying on that topic a bit uh, with inverse, if the markets are not have not been performing all that well, but but yet, you know, you're talking about other ways to, to potentially take advantage of the market, if you will. Are there opportunities right now? Do you see opportunities and, and what ETFs are out there that can help somebody seize those opportunities? Yeah, so it's interesting, and this is an this is this is an observation that's coming from from when we we look at a few things very frequently. Uh, uh, obviously, focus on the in, inflows and outflows for our funds, but also looking at does that correlate with performance and correlate with volumes that we see on the exchange. And so, those three elements are are important because um, what we've seen recently is that there's really kind of I'd say two or even three camps. You still have a, some risk on sentiment. So on down days, we're still we're still seeing. Um, traders uh, try to take advantage of bounce back. So we're still seeing a lot of activity in our bull funds and semiconductors and technology, which certainly if you look at the performance has, has, has really been one of the main sources of, of the pullback recently. But we also have that camp that I noted of people looking for uh, hedging their portfolios. And so that's why we've seen much greater interest in the inverse suite than we ever, uh, in, or what we call the bear funds than we ever had historically. And of course, it seems like the bear the bears are winning um, over, over the last couple of weeks, certainly performance wise. Um, but I find it interesting that we have not seen the capitulation um, from retail trading or from uh, from advisors um, that maybe maybe some would expect or see 
And some of that could be that we, we, we may be in for, uh, for more declines and some of the, uh, uh, some, some, uh, what we're really more seeing is on up days, some bear market rallies, or it could be quite simply that this is still an active two-way mark. And we have not seen uh, the broader pullback of, of folks just going to cash and, and, and hiding under the pillow. If that changes, um, that certainly, uh, that, that certainly may, may change our outlook or how we, how we view the world, but we're not seeing that yet. Dave, you know, we talked a little bit about the lineup, some of the different ETFs that you have. Is there an ETF out there that you look at and you say, this, this should have been a home run or, or, you know, advisors should know about this ETF, investors should know about it. Maybe some do, but you're just sort of maybe surprised that, that it, it really isn't more well-known at this point. There's, a, there's, a, there's sort of a handful of funds uh, uh, that come to mind. One fund is our, is our hydrogen ETF. The ticker is H-J-E-N uh, or H-Gen. Um, you know, that, that fund has seen some interest um, and has grown since we've launched it. Its performance is certainly uh, not uh, as a, something focused on clean energy. Uh, many of those particular stocks have, have struggled um, this year. But the opportunity for, for hydrogen as a clean energy source um, uh, has only grown um, over that period. So because valuations have come down, it doesn't necessarily mean the fundamentals of the story. Um, behind that has changed. So, so that's one that comes to mind that also uh, that is focused just on mRNA and companies involved with it. And that, that ticker is MSGR or Messenger uh, as the play on Messenger RNA. Uh, and, and of course, you know, there's names in there um, uh, like BioNTech and Moderna, but also a, a handful of other companies that are doing really exciting things, applying that technology to, for, uh, to fight everything from HIV AIDS to Lyme disease that's really just at the forefront of, uh, of course, the COVID-19 pandemic proved that that is a technology that can work in vaccines, but the applications are extremely wide. So I'm still excited about those particular funds, even though uh, they haven't necessarily caught on as widely uh, as one would hope. Yeah. And if, if you're listening in, I'm sure already, uh, I welcome you again to the website direction.com. Dave and his team put a lot of really great materials out there, thought content, leadership, uh, new investment ideas, strategies, and of course, you can follow him on all the social media sites like LinkedIn, M-A-Z-Z-A is Dave Mazza. Uh, Dave, how should investors, advisors, anyone listening in that says, I want to either learn more or I want to be talking to someone at the Direction team, how should they be engaging with you guys? Well, you, you, you hit the nail on the head a few minutes ago. Um, you know, we, we, we take great pride in our website for uh, a few reasons. One, it's, you know, uh, like, like any ETF issue, it's a place where you find your information about, about the ETF and holdings and performance and things of that nature, but also really the, the educational series that we put out, particularly with videos. Um, so some folks are visual learners. Other folks want to download the white paper and read it on their iPad or, or still print it out, what have you. But we really have both. So it's ability for folks to learn either about leverage and inverse ETFs or also about, about thematic investing, what have you. So really encourage people to, to go to direction.com for that. And then, of course, there's links to, to reach out to us either uh, 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 through, through email or other means as well. Um, so we, you know, really, that's a first place both to learn about leverage and inverse, what that might mean, but also any particular information about our funds. Yeah, and you can subscribe to some great free content uh, as well, just on the on the homepage of Direction.com. D I R E X I O N. Probably important that we should have started there, but Direction.com. <laughs> now that's a wrap on this edition of the Inside ETFs podcast. As a reminder, you can find this episode as well as many other episodes of the podcast on the New York Stock Exchange's website, HomeofETFs.com. Thank you, Dave, for being here to share your insights. Stay tuned for upcoming episodes featuring thought leaders from across the ETF ecosystem. I'm Douglas Jonas, head of exchange traded funds at the New York Stock Exchange, the home of ETFs. Schwab Asset Management is proud to support the Inside ETFs podcast. In today's complex world, Schwab Asset Management provides a simple, straightforward approach to investing. As one of the largest and most experienced asset managers, they offer low-cost core ETFs for building the foundation of a diversified portfolio. Their focused lineup, which includes market cap index and strategic beta ETFs, is a reflection of a commitment to deliver exceptional experiences to investors and the financial professionals who serve them. Learn more at schwabassetmanagement.com forward slash ETFs.